super depressed, you know, like I was worth millions of dollars on paper and then overnight I'm like worth nothing. Bond. James Bond. Hey everybody, Brian Lally, Hollywood native here. You're about to watch an episode of the show, Brian Lally, Hollywood native. I'm sitting here with my partner in crime, my right-hand man who's on my left right now, Scott Williams. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I see you're wearing a suit. Uh, yes, I have a very important meeting coming up. I didn't realize that the Hookers Association required you to wear, wear a suit. So who do we have on the show today? Today, Brian, we have two great guests. X and Ivy. From Party Shirt? Party Shirt. The Party Shirt guys, 21 million followers on TikTok. And if these guys aren't myth-busting, they're DJing to tens of thousands of people. We get to see where they met, how it was kismet immediately, and they went on their journey here. We're also going to hear what can't kill you in Australia, and we're going to hear what won't kill you in San Clemente, too. So it's a great show. These guys are fantastic, and we are honored to have them here. X and Ivy. Did y'all see my... Uh, yeah, I saw it! I saw it, I love that. It's so I took a picture of her right there. Junior year, Hollywood High School. No way! Yeah. We live right across the street. Yeah. You're in Alta Vista, Poinsettia? Where Poinsettia. Poinsettia, yep. Rock and roll Ralphs, baby. Yeah, rock and roll You go to the internet yeah. every day? Was that open when you went to school there? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Ralph? No, no, the internet. Oh, Your no, head no, is the no. internet. Uh, yeah. No, dude, you don't even know. You don't even fuck. Uh, what was there? That was a hotel. Yeah. And the pimps used to try to get the chicks from school. The high school. Yeah. No way. No fucking way. No. <laughs> Recruiting growing up fresh in, out. Growing up in Hollywood. And man. now they're saying Hollywood's turned to shit. It's oh, <laughs> it sounds like it's gotten better. Oh dude. You don't even know, man. You don't even know. I got I'm excited to hear some of the stories. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. The um the pimps would hang out. And, and try to get the chicks to come across the street. And would any of the girls do it? I'm sure they did yeah. at some time. But there was one real good-looking girl who I knew. And I walked out there. And he was like, baby, let me wrap you for a second. Come on, baby, why don't you come over here? Why don't you let me wrap you for a yeah. second? And I went out, and she was listening to her. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. And I, and I looked over him, and I said, hey, what's going on, man? Yeah. And then she was like, baby, let me wrap you for a second. White boy, I'll kill you. He said that to you? Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> he meant it. Yeah. It was no joke there. Yeah. Uh, and and it was like, what, but I'll kill you. So, baby, let me say that. Come on over here, baby. Let me, let me talk to you. And I was like, oh, Were fuck. Were you run inside or? No. I tried to play a little cool. I was yeah. like, oh. No, I would have been shit in my pants, too. Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> yeah. You're a high school I said kid. I tried to play it cool. Yeah. yeah I'm, like, I'm like 16 years old. This pimp's like, I'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> that was back in the day when yeah. people did that shit. Literally. Yeah. You've seen all of LA. Did uh, it get worse in the 90s or better in the 90s? It or? got worse in the 80s with the yeah. crack. Yeah. yeah. You know, the Russian mob selling crack uh, all Russian through Hollywood. Mob. Yeah. Where, where the streets just crazy, yeah. just crack these yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's funny because Perry Farrell used to go up where Hollywood and Highland is now. There was this ugly fucking office building. But some guys would do break dancing and stuff. Yeah. And Perry Farrell, I guess that was probably in the 90s, I'm trying to think, when Jane's Addiction was big. Yeah. But he'd just be up there all fucking smack down. Yeah. You know? He'd just be playing without a shirt on, you know, just be <laughs> have, have his guitar case out. He wasn't broke. I mean, yeah. yeah. He'd just be out there playing music. Just for humor. Know? Yeah. Would he get big crowds? Did they know uh, who he yeah, was? Yeah, sometimes. But if it was a tour season, you know, he'd yeah. get pretty big. But I don't think he was just out there, man, just doing his thing. Just he cracked just out. out. Yeah. He, he was <laughs> heroined out. You yeah. Know, opiates out. So... Fuck. Yeah, but it was it was wild. And then what they used to do was the, the crack dealers would, they had a bus pass, so if they saw the cops coming, they'd yeah. jump on a bus and they'd get yeah. off a few blocks down. And then it was wild. Yeah, the Russian Russian mob still runs a lot yeah. of Hollywood. Fucking they run all the cash dude, businesses, yeah. taxis, yeah. food trucks. Yeah. You know, anything they can get, tow trucks. Right, makes an, sense. Anything they can get Ooh. cash out of. Sure, so, a lot of weed business too. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I heard the cartels run the fruit stands. I don't know how true that is. But okay. Could be. Could you know. be. Yeah. Anything where there's, yeah, there's cash, cash to be had. Yeah. You know, anything to get away from the government. 
So when they say it's like LA's dangerous now, do you think it is dangerous oh, or no, now it's nothing? No, I mean, I guess some things have come up since the economy's turned, yeah. but come on, man. Back yeah. then they built... So I'm a real traditionalist for Hollywood. Yeah. They're just tearing down my hometown like yeah. crazy, yeah. building up shit. But the thing is about Hollywood and Highland, yeah. I don't think it's great because, okay, the story is turn of the century that was the hollywood hotel right it was like 12 rooms yeah then a woman named hershey not from the chocolate i always thought it was yeah. until recently not that she was an heir to you know riches yeah but not from the hershey chocolate she came out saw the hotel and said i love it she bought it and expanded it to like 200 rooms yeah That's so sick. it took up the whole block there used to be a street that ran through and this was on and hollywood and highland all right right on how yeah. right where the 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 complexes for yeah because yeah. i used to live in jefferson apartments on hollywood and highland oh okay yeah yeah well you used to live right there on, yeah on... i lived uh like across from the chick-fil-a it's called the highland okay okay yeah, yeah. i go to the nice chick-fil-a place. like every day yeah. Yeah. yeah so it used to be just like one block when they built hollywood and highland they cut off the block i hate when they do that too they're like they're like here's a street here now we're going to build something. Your street is gone. Yeah, you know, right. You can cut through and stuff. There's not enough traffic. I'm yeah. like, yeah, here's another street. That's done. Yeah. And then they put up the complex. But anyway, so she had that for a long time, the Hollywood Hotel. And then a guy came in, I think, in the 1960s, and he bought it and tore it down. He said he cried. Yeah. But, you know, it was for progress. Right. Oh, you know. Yeah, fuck that. But yeah. and he put up the ugliest office building I'd ever yeah. seen in my life. It was just ugly, and it was there for years. So that's my story, and what happened when they put Hollywood Highland in it started making Hollywood safer. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not yeah. unhappy about that. No, dangerous now. No, in the '80s with the crack man, yeah. they, they were following. You know, they had to change rental cars would have a little tag in the back window, and you know, crackheads are just following rental cars because they yeah. figured the torch are just mugging people yeah. left and right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's crazy. And they had to put. Whatever they had in the window, they had to take that yeah. stuff out and change the the labeling on the car because they were just like, oh, yeah. rental yeah, car target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they no, barely any cameras and shit. Oh, or, yeah, no yeah. cameras. There was no yeah. Yeah. back then. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, come on, like the cops had bigger shit back then to deal with too. So yeah, it's like, yeah. even if you do, it's like they're probably like, all right, like, yeah. there's no way of us catching up. I guess everything's done on the internet or something. Yeah. yeah. My, um, I got a buddy I grew up with who's been a detective in Hollywood for years. Shout out Frank Marmalejo. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think you just said it's all done over the internet nowadays. Yeah. However, they do that. Maybe Jesus. the black black web. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever, yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dark, the dark web. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that, was that racist? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. The black web. Oh, I'm sorry. That's so different than the dark web. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> never heard that. Well, I don't know. So, the dark web. What, the black web? <laughs> I see that's going to go south the rest of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting a little lower. Now I look like your oh, fucking yeah. ventriloquist. <laughs> you're, you're big enough so as is. So, is this a father-son duo? Is this, are you guys related uh, at all? No, we're not actually related. Uh, we got a whole series of videos that he created while he plays, Dad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you know. Oh, yeah. So like, I'm a retired porn producer, successful porn producer from the valley. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. boogie nights. You yeah. Say, that, that ain't, look, dude. I used to deliver food years ago, and we used to go to these places. You know what well, I mean? Well, they were mid shoot, or yeah, like, they'd be shooting. Yeah. And sometimes one of the performers would come out. We were at this at yeah. this gay porn shoot. Yeah. And this guy comes out. They get him to come out and pick up the food. I, I say, I'll go in. This chick's like, No, no, no. No, no. I said, okay. And this guy comes up. He's wearing fucking, you know, tra you know, uh, jogging pants, sweats, uh, yeah. runners, as they call them nowadays. All right. And he's got half a boner, <laughs> and he's fucking sweating. He's got no shirt on. they got the performer coming out to get the food. And I'm like, and this is, it's, it's one of those, if you don't know the, the stereotype, it's one of those Granada Hills houses that has a long driveway. Yeah, no, so I know that. I know that. Right, yeah. so they're all all the way in the back. But yeah. that's that's the truth. So, I used to deliver to porn houses. I mean, they're all gone now. The warehouses they put apartments there in like Canoga Park, and Woodland Hills. But I'd see these some of these performers that I recognized. Uh, not that I watch porn. Right. <laughs> and these yeah. chicks, of course, <laughs> these chicks are in the, in the parking lot going, "Oh fuck, I could hardly work today. I got so much razor burn. You know, I'm so sore and shit." And I'd just be walking by with the food going, 
Okay. And how old were you when you were delivering? Oh, well, I was twenty years ago. Yeah. I was an adult, but right. you know, I was I what you know I was a young actor yeah. and, and a newer actor, yeah. not so young, but a newer actor. Yeah. Maybe twenty five years ago, but yeah, I'd see uh, Peter North. Uh, filling up on chicken. You know who that is, Peter? Oh, he was a huge porn star. Not that I watch porn, no. but he was you've a, heard. <laughs> you've heard. He's... But he was at Kukuru Chicken. Used to be out here, and he was just loading up on his chicken. And he had the most evil look in his eyes. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? He's <laughs> <laughs> getting ready. Yeah, getting, getting his job. But yeah, so it was. The Valley's known for that. Yeah. yeah. So, now that was so, even before I moved here. I knew that was one of the stereotypes. This is a part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you ever like walk into there thinking they were going to use you for a shoot? Like, no, oh, the pizza no, boy no, comes no, in. No, no, no. <laughs> You're just there to fluff them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Just, well, you That's know, why they sent it, you another girl it for that shoot. the bills. Yeah. yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Whatever, Whatever takes. takes. Yeah. They tip well? Huh? They give you a good tip? Yeah, they tip well. They paid. They were cool. Yeah. You know, but it was, but it's like a professional place. You know, you go in, there's a reception area. Right, yeah. right. The chicks are out talking about razor burn and getting sore, you know, from getting yeah. banged all day with <laughs> yeah. the razor burn. Then you walk in, there's a reception area. Yes, can we help you? You know, uh, yeah, I've yeah. got this. And people come and pick it up there. You know, yeah. the house in the hills was just like the yeah. dude sweating it out with half a half a woody, you know, <laughs> coming out. But, yeah, it was just uh, is what it is. Used to go out to Larry Flint's uh had a, a place uh, out in Chatsworth. Used to go out to that place. Yeah, was that before he got shot or after? That uh, was after. But he had a, a trans woman working there, which was unusual 25 years ago. So yeah. she was always... Uh, He's a progressive, honestly. Yeah, He's, yeah uh, I, I guess he was. <laughs> But she was always asking me for my number. I was like, excuse me, ma'am, I'm married. She's like, <laughs> yeah. So. You got a ring on the finger, what can you do? Yeah, what can I say? So that's the Valley porn history, a little bit of Hollywood history. So I love that. what we do here is find out where everybody comes from and, you know, just get a little breakdown yeah. and where they're at and where they see the future. I love it. I'd say we have the video. Have you seen? You've seen the video, obviously. No, I haven't seen the video. I tried oh, to find oh, the podcast. I couldn't see Oh, it. you're saying of like ourselves. Oh, yeah. you talk, are you talking about the video, the music yeah. video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. It's like, whoa. Yeah, yeah right. it turned yeah. out really yeah. good. That yeah. actually... Yeah. I was happy with that. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, was a lot of fun. fun. I had yeah. a lot of fun out there with you guys. Really, yeah, that's it was really true, cool. Yeah. So definitely down at the club. So it was real, real nice because oh, yeah, the people. Club too. Yeah, you guys killed it with the body shot scene. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It was yeah. You humor. have to insert it in here somewhere for so people can get yeah. contacts. But on the clip. Yeah, run yeah. the clip. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool because I'm an older man. In case you can't tell. But going down there with people who were fans of the YouTube channel, yeah, too, yeah. which I didn't expect. It's yeah. some, something I didn't know that nowadays, uh, it's not can I get a can I get a pic anymore, it's can I get a vid. Right. Yeah. Can I get a, a vid? But it's only a, a three-second Yeah, no, exactly. Nah. It's just say what yeah. up. Right. You know, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I'm sitting here with Gramps. You yeah, know? exactly. And so that's always a lot of fun for me because I've taught acting for many years, so I'm, I'm around a lot of young artists, yep. you know, for many years. Uh, you know, my friends are all, you know, I mean, he's too old now. I met him when he was in his 20s, you know, but my people I hang out with and create with are in their 20s, yeah. you know what I mean? And then, you know, I've been blessed like that. It's very cool. And so when everybody, at the club, not everybody, you know, half, no, but a, dozen, a, good half yeah, a dozen yeah. groups from the club come up, Graham's going to get yeah. a bid? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. okay. And do you get that when you're just walking around LA? Do people come up? When the series was running, when yeah. I was on the current series? On the yeah. Sunday? Yeah, I would yeah. get that. Not so much now. Right. But I was on Hollywood Boulevard taking some friends a couple months yeah. ago. And uh, on Orange, you know, where the big uh, um, you oh, know, yeah. merch place is. Orange yeah, and yeah. Hollywood, yeah, the right? souvenirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And when I was in there, I got stopped a couple of times. And the people oh, yeah. I was taking for were like from Kentucky, they're like, what's going on? I said, they're like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're blown I said, away. Probably. I said, I'm famous in a circle that big. <laughs> you, know, you know, but but people from out of town were like, can I get a pin? Like, totally. I mean, yeah. yeah, to someone in LA, it's like they see real celebrities every day. But then we go to some place where like we went to... Um, where was it? Missouri. Oh, right? man. Well, so we went to Mizzou, like the, the university. Oh, okay. So university. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, college, yeah. you know, because we we're promoting like this alcohol, like called Beatbox. Right. It's like a wine cooler yeah. type thing, right? But so they have this camera crew with us, and a couple people know who we are from the TV show. Right. So that when a couple people recognize you, then other people feel comfortable, and you've got right. a film crew that's right. already creating this right. sort of like, 
you know, artificial sort of like, oh, they're a celebrity yeah, type thing, you know. So again, I'm well aware we're no one. But like with the camera crew and people coming up to us, it just like created this like swarm and you would have thought we were Brad Pitt or it something. It was fucking <laughs> It was like, yeah. we were like, oh yeah. shit. As soon as the cameras walked in, it was like, not like, it was like, no, like no, people like. red like, cameras oh, on shit. Yeah. Like, like movie status. Yeah. And we were like, oh shit. It's like right. a boombox, you know, and yeah, so I was right. like. You would have thought the Pope walk, you know, came yeah. out. It was <laughs> crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's it, weird because other days in LA, like, we won't get recognized for a couple yeah. of days. And then there'll be days where, like, a hundred people come up to us. Yeah. So it's so, like, sporadic. Yeah, it's like, happens. Once one person comes up, then everyone around yeah. them either feels comfortable or they're just like, hey, that person's getting a photo. I better get one right. too, just in case. You know? <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. Just in case they're going to miss something. And what I learned through a friend of mine, we were shooting something down at the warehouse. And this kid came in, and he was trying to get in, and he he said he was with some business, but he really just wanted to see the warehouse, which yeah. I wasn't allowed, you know, to yeah. show him. But and my friend's like, he's really nervous because of you. I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah, you know, he's like 21, 22. She's like, he's really nervous. And what I learned at, and I thought it was an ego thing. Right. I was afraid it was an ego thing in the beginning, but I have to ask if they want pictures Dude. because sometimes they're too nervous to ask. That's exactly how we are too, you know? Because right. it's like, you know, being a kid or whatever, you're like, do I ask? Is that weird? Right. Yeah. So we're like always, even if someone's like, no, we're just like, you just got to ask. I know. There's know? nothing like, more like, because <laughs> yeah. someone will come up and be like, yeah, I know you. And then you're like, do you want a photo? Because you're trying to do the right, right thing, right? Because right. you're like, they are nervous. Yeah. And yeah. then they'll be like, no. And then you're just like, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. it happened to, that happened to me at the club yeah. right yeah. the shoot because yeah. one guy was like hey I really like you know yeah. everybody's like you and Jesse made the best videos yeah. I always say that and I agree with that but we yeah. he'd be like you and Jesse made and, and so I said to this guy I saw him later I was like oh did you want to get a pic he goes no I work with these guys all the time so I, I was like <laughs> yeah, no, I know but it's yeah. like I, know. Yeah. I think you know because obviously it's just like you look stupid but then it's like you do it for the for the one kid yeah. who's gonna look at that, right. you know, remember it for the next ten. Like I remember yeah. when I was fourteen, I came to America. You know, parents probably spent all this money on this huge vacation. The one thing I remember was I met Kim Kardashian at the airport and got a photo oh, on the fuck. way home. You know, right? And I didn't even know who the fuck Kim Kardashian. Like I knew that she was famous. I right. didn't watch the show or anything, right. but like that one interaction meant more to me than you know all the right, Disneyland. Yeah. All so I was like, you do it for, you know, the one people who are going to remember right, it, you know? Right, And this kid, she was like, he's really nervous. You got to, and I was like, hey, man, you got to want to get a pic. He's like, can we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah. Yeah, those yeah, moments. Yeah, that's a one. Like, yeah. I, met, I, I walk in Toluca Lake. I do my, you know, I walk four or five miles a day. Not bragging, just saying. Yeah, doing your 10,000 steps. Yeah, and, and this guy walked up, and he's like, Brian? I go, yeah. And because they're the same age as my acting students, right. I never sure... If this is someone I taught. Of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, yeah, man, how you doing? He's like, good, good. And he's like, you know, shithole. And I was like, oh, okay, that's who he is. Yeah. Like, so we just talked. And then he was with uh, his girlfriend and another couple. And then I, I was doing my, my thing. And I came back and they were walking this way again. And she goes, okay, he was too nervous to ask you. Can yeah. he get a picture? That's and, so And I'm cute. like, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. And she was like. Yeah, he was too nervous. I was like, yeah, man. He goes, hey, I'm sorry. I don't mean to bother you. And I'm uh, like, cool. And this is what I also learned. This is very early on. You know, a couple of years ago, it was early on. Never give away your favorite hat. Oh, oh you dude, gave away your favorite ne hat? Never give away your favorite hat. Because I had a favorite full sin hat. It was, yeah. you know, I mean, I got this one and some other ones, but this one was my favorite. And he was so excited. Yeah. I gave it to him. He's like, you don't have to do that. Yeah. I was like. And so I started wearing non-favorite hats. Yeah, that. smart, like, oh, God damn it. I went back to the warehouse and I would look through like 50 yeah. hats. And I'm like, dude, don't you? And and Roderick, shout out to Roderick, uh, my man. Um, I was like, you got any more of these yeah. around? And we just didn't have the one that I was looking for. So never give away your favorite uh, hat. It's a lesson. If you're going to be walking around, yeah. wear some merch. Yeah, wear some you, crap that you right. Yeah, 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 exactly, so, yeah. But he enjoyed it so much. I was I was happy to. It get was it worth him. it because I'm I'm sure he hasn't taken off that hat since. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Hasn't washed it either. Yeah, he hasn't. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't cleaned it. God, you can take hats to dry cleaners, and they have fucking you know plastic kind of devices. I need to that do fit. that. Yeah. yeah. I just bought this one hat. I bought it like it's a, like thrifted hat, 
and it smells. Oh, <laughs> no, nah, I'll ask, what's it smell like? Uh, I'm not even going to say it. But... <laughs> it smells like a fresh fish market. Oh, like, yeah. it smells like <laughs> we're out in the club, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, I'm like, like, I'm like, all our friends, I'm like, do I fucking smell right now? Like, yeah. they're like, no, you're fine. I'm like, I keep getting this waft of just <laughs> fish. Like, Man, Brian, you know what I love doing? Yeah. I love tapping that subscribe button. Mmm. I love it too, son. And just like all your dates, I tap it last. But nothing's as good as tapping this button. You see Brian here? He's not always doing the best. Financially, mentally, physically, for sure. You want to help keep Brian off the streets of Hollywood? There's a way you can help. Join us on Patreon. You want to tell them what we got on there, buddy? Yes, we have the general admission. We have the backstage. And we have the VIP all-access pass. So please, join today. I'm due for a bath. In the arms of the <laughs> angel. <laughs> and I like, I'm like, wait a minute, I just got this fucking hat. I take it off, and I, I'm like, holy oh, shit. I go up to X, he's like, oh, dude, yeah. honestly, you can't even wash that yeah. hat. Like, yeah. that hat is a one of a kind smell. You got to keep it like that. Yeah. Homie was working offshore. <laughs> dude, who knows what oh, homie was doing in that yeah. hat? Like, I don't know. We used to have several racetracks out, out in the outskirts the IE, the Inland Empire yeah. of LA. <laughs> Uh, they're gone now. We have the big one in Fontana, the big stock right. car track, but it used to be Riverside International Race. We used to go out there all the time. And I wore this champion spark plug hat like forever. And I'm sure it was smelling like that because yeah. I never took it off. So I went to get my driver's license picture. <laughs> yeah. And the woman said, uh, you got to take your hat off. And I, was, and I just said, I just came up and I was like, I'm sorry. Uh, I just had brain surgery and, you know, I don't really want to take it yeah. off. And she's like... <laughs> Oh, I'm so okay. Like, so in your driver's license, yeah, no, you have the I, hat. Yeah, yeah, I, I have it. You know, I have it at home. I found it when I moved, and I found the hat. And when people would look at the license, like bouncers or cops, would yeah. they ever say anything? Like, why? Yeah. You get, what yeah. would they say? Well, yeah. How did you get your hat in? Yeah, they go, <laughs> they go. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. I was like, oh, sorry. You like brain, brain surgery? surgery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you have brain surgery or no? No. Okay. No. No. <laughs> Which <laughs> I felt bad. I mean, no, I mean, I was, just I, was, I, was I don't know. I was 21. Yeah. yeah. I had a baby face. Well, you see the pic. Yeah. I had a baby face. I wasn't 21. I was a junior in high school, but, you know, I might have been. But, yeah, so a lady felt so bad, and I felt bad. She let yeah. me keep it on, so, but I never took it off. Probably smelled like that. Yeah, so, it might have been that one. I'm hoping, yeah. 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 Well, I'm hoping, yeah. <laughs> That's the one you bought. Yeah. So, well, cool, man. So, where are you from originally? So, originally from Shepparton, Australia. It's about two hours north of Melbourne, so more... The way the Inland Empire is to LA, you know, and right. people from the Inland Empire might just say they're from LA because who the fuck knows the Inland Empire right. if you're not from right. sort of SoCal. Yeah. And so grew up sort of inland, you know, rural area. A lot of little insects and shit that can kill yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, that not that I'd you. really say, you know, you see some snakes when you're sort of walking and stuff like right. that, but that's sort of the scariest. I, just, I think the ones that can kill you are the ones that don't look like they can kill you. I think right. those are apparently the scariest ones, but... No really brushes with death or anything, you know. Not in your house, like, and you know, one day you wake up, there's a huge spider. There, there the are them, you see those, you know. Yeah. But, like, the big spiders are the ones you don't have to worry about. It's oh, like really? the red backs and the smaller ones that are deadly. Yeah. I mean, the big ones can still fuck with you, don't get me wrong. But, yeah. you know, like, the daddy long legs are harmless. And, you right. know, I mean, a tarantula, yeah, you don't want to be messing with them. But it's like the small little ones yeah. that are the ones that are apparently got the deadliest whatever in them. So what freaked me out as a kid, I, in, in some book or encyclopedia before the internet, there was like a trapdoor spider. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. those things are sketch, bro. Okay, yeah. so that's that's freaked me out my whole life. I probably saw it in Australia. Uh, I don't know. I think so. I don't even know. But, but uh, what freaked me out was... So you know about it, though. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. seen those things. Yeah. Those things and are really, scary. Are They're pretty big, yeah, but they literally just like make this little like door and like an insect will come up and they'll just fucking like... Pop, pop out, out, grab them, bring them back yeah. in. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, That's cool. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So go ahead. <laughs> I was just, I, like there was these things as a kid that I'd seen because I watched so much American TV, like quicksand and black holes. That's what I thought I had to be scared of, you know, right. not insect. You know, I was yeah. Always, like, it's the funniest thing because everyone in America, yeah. they're like, "Fuck!" Like Australia, they tell you you're always within a hundred feet of death or something, like yeah, with the snakes and like, death, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So it's like the roles yeah. reversed. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't seen. I've probably seen way more of America than I have Australia. I've probably been to about thirty out of the fifty st states in America. Excellent. I've seen more of America than I have. Right? Uh, yeah, I've been all over. So I've seen some, like, there's just so much diversity here in terms of, like, landscape. Right. And in Australia, I've only really stayed along the coast because everything inland past where I'm from is just sort of, like, arid desert. There's no water, so you can't right. really go too far unless you... I mean, you can, but you got to, like, be trying to do that, you know? There's not just, like, a bunch of stops on the way. Right. And anyway, so... Grew up in Australia, moved here at 18, and then I've just sort of lived in LA for the last eight years. Lived in Playa del Rey, lived in Hollywood, went to USC, now live in Hollywood again. You went to USC? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I thought you were just some Molly taken DJ. No, I, I wish. <laughs> I, I try to play that, but unfortunately. Yeah. Um, that's where I met Ivy because my roommate at USC had grown up with Nick back in Orange County. Okay. And so when I was like, I want to be a DJ, he was like, you need to meet Ivy. He's in music production school already in OC. And so it was summer 2016 next to, you. have you ever been to the Shrine, the, the theatre? Did you ask me if I'd ever <laughs> been to the Shrine? I, I thought you had. I, just, I didn't thought I was going to be. Been, but. You know who Robin Trower is? No. You know who Peter Frampton is? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I, I used to usher concerts Show me the there. way and is he playing yeah. the harmonica? Yeah, I used to usher Hell yeah. concerts at the Shrine. I used to work there. What year was this? I don't even want to admit, 70s. Yeah, because I'd seen some YMCA, them, the village people playing at the Shrine in the 70s. I'm like, I didn't realize it was that old. Oh, my God. Jeff Beck, Jackson Brown. I mean, yeah, I saw I saw the uh, Brother Johnson there. Yeah, I used to work there. So, yeah, I've seen you this is the craziest thing about the Shrine. So I hadn't been down there in years. I had no reason to go down there. Then I had some friends who were filming. I got a job with a friend of mine, a director friend who was on the podcast, Rob Tyler. Shout out to Rob. So I was going down there a lot. I was looking for the shrine. I couldn't find it. So when I worked there, when I was a kid, the shrine was a standalone building. Right. But now there's all those USC Shit apartments around. Yeah. Right. So they're like, I don't know, six, seven stories, whatever yeah. they want. So yeah. That wasn't there. Right. So you just drove down the street and there was the shrine out of yeah. town. Yeah. And I was like, where the hell is the shrine? I know it's I know it's right off yeah. of Figueroa. I know where it is. And then you're like, it's actually just that door now. Right. It's the whole fucking <laughs> yeah. block now, yeah. you know. So yeah, so I know the shrine. Okay, yeah, no, it's it's a legendary like <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, it is. We used to have the Academy Awards there. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. And then when did right. they move them now to? Is it at the Chinese Theater? At the Dolby Theater. Okay. Yeah. The Dolby. okay. yeah. There's a shrine, and across the place, there's like all these bungalow apartments, and we met there. So right. one day we're going to play the shrine, and that's going to be like dope yeah, because yeah. that's sort of where oh, we met. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, we don't have any plans to play it, but we and we're going to one day, though. one yeah, day. One you day, know, yeah. we're we're very far off, but we're going to get there. Yeah. So we met there, and straight away we're like, let's just do this together. You know, it was like instant, like met. You know, okay, and cool. then yeah. So I'll sort of catch you guys up to speed, and then I we can sort of interject where you know his things are from. But so we met like 2016. You know we're doing party shirt casually, sort of DJing. You know whether it's a frat party or sort of like a, you know a social like the expat society or you know these societies at USC. Yeah, anything we could. Really. Anything yeah, we could. Well, you know, sure, that's what you do. Yeah. And so then you know 2019. Fast forward a few years, we start taking it more serious. We get booked out for this gig in Chicago that we lost money on, but it was just fun to sort of go out there for a show. Right. We come back and then we're like, all right, let's take party shirt seriously. So start of 2019, we start releasing music. I graduated mid-2019. We moved in together in that Hollywood apartment. Right. Ivy moved up from Orange County and we're still in the same apartment. Right. Yeah. And so then Ivy started working valet at Ballet Hotel. Oh, I was shit, selling like it. plastic surgery. It. It was so Jim fun. Terry, who's good friends with Chris down here. <laughs> He worked there for years, Valet. He's an actor. I wonder so. if you know him. Cause there's... Cheers, no, man. no, this was years ago. Oh, okay. yeah. We're older. But I mean, they, they, cause there's Dude, so many, like, they probably... Yeah, there's some, there's some legends there. Yeah. So, like, there were guys there that still... Or at least yeah. at the Beverly Hills Hotel. There's guys that have worked there like yeah. 40 years, you oh, know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Jim worked at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Dude, being also. a... That fucking job was like... I miss it sometimes. That was some of the best shit ever. Like, wake up every day, you're just like, who the hell's going to walk yeah. in? Right, right. You I'm a huge people. car guy, too. Yeah. So oh, it's like... I just love fucking driving. Driving cars, I'm yeah. like, all right, this is gonna decide like 
what I'm going to get when I'm older, you yeah. know, just getting to drive all these different cars. My son was not uh, a big car guy until he started working valet at the Glendale Galleria. Yeah. And you got a lot of rich Armenian guys who are just into fucking cars. And right. Just totally. bringing in fucking Mercedes yeah. and Bentleys. They love and, their BMWs yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. BMW. I mean, he's driving all, he's sending me pictures of Ferraris because he knows I'm the big, I'm his dad. I'm yeah, the biggest yeah. car guy in the yeah. world. And he was, and he's like, look what I'm driving. Yeah. So, so Rubbing it in. Yeah. So yeah, that's a cool gig, yeah, man. Cool I understand. Gig. Well, you know, it's cool to hear you say that because not I it, it's a good I was bartender for years out of Jerry's Famous Deli in Studio City. I love yeah. Jerry's Famous Deli. Oh, we used to get a ton of celebs in too. Yeah. Who, who did you who did you meet that you were uh, Dude, literally it's like say a name like Yeah. Fucking The Rock, Jay Z. I loaded Beyonce and Jay Z's kids into their car seats. Right. Like literally J. Cole, like there's so many people. Like X will tell you, I would come day. back every day. I'd, I'd be, be like, like dude, I saw today. this person, yeah. this person. I don't want to ask who's a dick. It's not oh, that no. kind of show. I already got it. Like, Oh, if you want to. I, I and, don't ask that because I have my own experience with celebrities. Yeah. And 99% of them have been really nice. Dude, this one, I came home and instantly walked through the door and told X. Because, like, I love this guy. still love this right. guy. Like, But fucking Jason Bateman was just a fucking prick to me. <laughs> you know? Like... Comes in, he's with Jennifer Aniston and his wife, I think, and one other person. I'm like, oh, okay, like, I'll keep it up close for you. And he just looks at me, he's like, okay. I was like, oh, fuck, okay, dog. Like, I was like, I don't know if I caught you. And I just said it wasn't like I was being, I was just so casual, like, oh, I'll keep it close for you. And right. he just looked at me like I was a fucking cockroach. Right. I was like, all right. Right. Come home, I tell Alex, I'm like, dude, like, like I think I caught him on the wrong day, but God well, damn it, I happen. love that guy. That can happen. So I used to own the biggest restaurant delivery service in Los Angeles yeah. before Uber Eats and all that. So Curry and Chive, shout out to Curry and Chives. It's a dead <laughs> entity. Shout out to Sherry McCrone. She was my co-owner and my wife at the time. We delivered to, you know, uh, Gabriel Union and D.L. Hughley and Kevin Costner yeah. and Anna Nicole Smith and Jane Leaves from Fraser and on and on. And, you know, rock stars and and everybody was cool. Everybody was cool. Do I want to say it? Do I want to say who wasn't cool? I think you got it now. Yeah, I, say got it. Cool. I need to know. Fuck so, and I'm not Fuck. talking about one time because <laughs> yeah. any time... Fuck. That's a GDA noise. Yeah. It? Like, I love it. That's good, though. Like, don't snap. Yeah. yeah. They're sending them after me. Oh, we, we, yeah. we, can we can always cut it if you don't feel yeah. comfortable. Either. So, now, the thing is, anybody can have a bad day. Of course. Yeah. I've run into people on the street, you know. I've had, yeah, I've had bad days. Right. Totally. So, I talked to this guy half a dozen times or more. Yeah. And he was a dick every single time. Yeah. Howie Mandel. Really? Dude. I've heard see. some things. Like, oh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah. yeah, no, I've heard he's a sort of a dick to his wife and stuff, and like his wife. Oh, usually I talked to her, nicest person. I believe it. Kids, they were very young, I believe nice it. people. You know, been to the house. He lives by. Uh, I don't know if he still lives there, but he lives in. Well, I don't want to say that. Because say his that. address. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. But he Dox lives, him. He lives yeah. by uh, <laughs> Kim and and Kanye. Okay, yeah. okay. so he's doing all right. Together. So what kind of dick are we talking? Like attitude or he's just like, you so know, he, like backhanded he, comments? Um, we're like, going to get into this, man. No, I don't just, know. Like, just all the time, just just a fucking dick, yeah. you know. I, I don't want to get into the whole yeah, thing. Fair, yeah, fair. attitude. It's just on the phone. Yeah. I had to call. They yeah. straighten out some yeah. stuff. Oh, it was God. like yeah. some James Gordon type what? shit. Gordon, whatever he's going through right now. You say he went to the restaurant here. Oh, yeah. In New York or something. Yeah. Like that for, yeah. For and then he like, days. What Apollo, happened? James, is it Cordon or Gordon? I think it's Cordon. 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 The, the, the British the talk show. show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there's this famous, like, Bolt Czar or something, some, like, famous restaurant in New York. Right. The owner had came out and been like, you know, this guy's a dick and he's been a dick on two separate occasions. And then so James Gordon <clears> comes <throat> out and he apologizes and the restaurant owner's like, it's all cool. We should happen. Water under the bridge. And then James Corden's like, actually, you know what? I'm not sorry. And he sets up this like sort of mock interview with the New York Times at the restaurant. And he and he sets up this person next to him to sort of have a fight with the server over the same item right. to be like, their eggs just suck. And he pulls out the, like, it was all so pre -planned. He orchestrated yeah. this yeah. whole, dude, yeah. Why? And so, I mean, it didn't cut, like, it's not proven he did that, but it's super obvious in the way the interview is conducted. He pulls out, like, these statistics, and you know, it's yeah. just like it came out like, 
you know, he apologized and left it at that, but he had to come back and be like, you know what, I'm actually not sorry, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at this. Yeah. And then, I don't know, it just makes him, like, he's not a super likable guy yeah. to begin with, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, it yeah. sucks when you, like, build up someone in your head in a certain I way. Know, yeah. Yeah. That's heroes. too bad because I love the carpool karaoke. Yeah. I know, me too. Yeah. We found out they don't even drive the car. Yeah. They get it yeah. Around. It's, on the, yeah. yeah it's on the truck. Yeah. 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 That's funny. That's, that's what Jack Carpenter does. Jack Carpenter was one of the first guests here. He's a legendary, um, you know, stunt man and, and uh, car guy for the studios. You know, you've, you've seen him a thousand times. You've yeah. seen, yeah. obviously, Pineapple <laughs> Express. Cool. Yeah. So it. when Franco has his foot through the yeah, windshield yeah. and he's racing around Jack, it's, it's literally, he's towing it. And he's racing around and shit like that. That's and he tells a great story about your know, fans of True Lies. Do you know True Lies, Arnold Schwarzenegger? I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. What about uh, Terminator? Oh, Terminator I've, I've 2. Been, I've, I've oh, watched him, but I know him. Yeah, yeah. 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 So What's he's... the one where he has the kid? Or he, he becomes pregnant? Oh, that's... Uh, um, I forget the name. I forget of it, it too. Yeah. I need to watch that one. Yeah, man. that one's blast. I forget from the, the name of it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his too. Kindergarten Cop and all that. You know, Yo, all Kindergarten movies. Cop. Yeah. Boys have penises, girls have vaginas. Greatest line ever in a movie, yeah. right there. Yeah, it's not a tumor. Yeah. Yeah. I got a headache. Oh, it's probably a tumor. It's not a tumor. <laughs> so Jack is just one of those guys that toes him, toes, toes him, and the stuff, camera but he yeah. usually does it at high speeds yeah. and does car wrecks and car yeah. jumps. Anyway, so he was sitting in that seat right there. But yeah. let me ask you this: so. What were your influences growing up? Did you always know you wanted to do this? Did you always know you wanted to be involved in music? We both have our own sort of path. But so mine was, you know, grew up rural Australia and sort of just grew up on like The Simpsons and movies and all this American media. Right. So it always been like my parents wanted me to do an after school activity, but I'm obviously not an athlete. So they enrolled me in drama lessons when I was like, I want to say nine years old. Right. And so from there, I was like, I want to be a Spielberg, except I want to write, I want to direct, I want to act, oh, wow, I want to, you know, cool. do so it So at all. a young age, you knew that. Yeah, I sort yeah. of, and, and then I'd sort of like, um, you know, so I'd done that, and then I found YouTube in 2007 when I was like 11 years old, because um, there was a parody of the Paris Hilton song or something, and right. then there was like a new segment about it that went viral. And then my cousin had came over and she showed me Smosh's video of them lip syncing the Pokemon theme song. I don't know if you remember that. No. But it was like the most viewed video on YouTube at the time with 20 million views. That was the okay. most viewed video. Oh, wow. And before it was, there was that guy who did the Evolution of Dance. I don't know if you remember that one. That yeah, yeah. I, I know that. That a little yeah. while after. Yeah. And so I was like, what the fuck? There's these kids with their camcorder that put the video on YouTube and now they're famous. Right. And so I was like, I want to do YouTube, you know? So I started like making these, I remember my first video, I was 11 years old and it was called Don't Smoke or Smoking's Bad For You. And I've got this like colored candle that's like all these different colors. And I didn't realize at the time, but it looked identical to a bong. So here's an 11 year old that's like holding a bong, like don't smoke, it's bad for you. And my parents were like. You've been watching Brian Lally, Hollywood native. Now I want to talk to you about something I'm really passionate about and that's teaching acting. So I co-founded Lola's Acting School with my son, Kyle Lally, Lally or Lally Acting School. I've been acting for a, a long time now of 100 plus credits on IMDb, hundreds of plays I've been involved with over the years. And I just want to share that experience with you. What we do differently here at Lola's is we give you practical advice that you can use on a movie set, on a play, an audition, anywhere. We give you the foundation to build yourself as a great actor. If you come to us, you don't know anything. We can teach you everything you need to know to be comfortable on a, on a set and to excel. Don't just listen to me. Look at what our students are doing. Daryl Wesley, who is writing on two hit shows, The Game and The Upshaws, and Ben Barrett, who is a series regular on The Politician. Megan Davis, who is uh, playing Amber Heard in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard story. Come check us out. We're at the Historic Arc Theater in the NoHo Arts District. You ever want to try plant-based eating? I have. What, you're a little confused, overwhelmed, you don't know how to get started? Definitely. Well, there's a simple answer to that. Go to Debbie Chu's Chew On Vegan YouTube channel. Debbie Chu is a plant-based RN. I've known Debbie for over 38 years, and she's very good at what she does. You go to the channel, and there's 300, over 300 recipes. They're simple, easy to make, and they're delicious. If you want to try it, you just might get healthy. Give it a shot. Chew On Vegan. 
I don't know if you should post this, you know, but they were actually, they were really super cool with it all. So I got into YouTube and then, you know, I really got into like the marketing side of it and kept with that and started making money from that and then got more interested in the business side. And so then I got focused like on business and startups and stuff. And that's what actually eventually brought me to America when I was 18. I moved here for a startup. Oh, okay. And I never really had thought about music as like producing it because yeah. I'd, I'd been interested in electronic music and sort of dance music and... I never was like, you know, good at instruments or anything. I played the drums for a little bit when I was like 11 or 12. I played the drums for like a couple of years, but I was never any good at them. And so I didn't take music seriously. And I honestly had given up the dream of sort of being an influencer, like, or whatever, I guess, whatever you call it these days, you know, right. but at the time I thought, you know, the only way to do it was acting. Right. And so when I came out here, I actually... I have to ask, did you ever meet my hero, Kate Blanchett? No, sadly never met Kate Blanchett. Never okay. met really many Australians. What's going on, Show? Oh, what is up, Show? I'm on... Uh, we're doing the podcast right now with Party Show. Oh, shit. Goodbye. No, you don't have to hang up. Yeah, this is, this join is, in. This, this is my son. <laughs> Pull up. This, this, this is my son. So he was just talking about being a, a drummer at one time. My son's a drummer. Oh, hell yeah. So there you go. All right. You what, okay. Rock so on, you're baby. just coming from your appointment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is your hand okay? That's good. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's weird, but you know, that's life. All right. Bye, all right. Show. All right. Talk to you. I'll talk to you. Bye, Bye. Bye. Did you send to Acton too? <laughs> you know, I don't want to get into this. The good old fatherly <laughs> side right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, I could play you a video, a um, short film he did that we just won an award at a film. Oh, hell yeah. Ago, so. Just a full-on porno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was the guy with the half a boner. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The film was about how he hates his dad. <laughs> yeah, my son's a really good actor, and he just decided to take some time off, and now he sells cars. Fair and enough. He's, and he's doing well. Sick. Yeah, he's a good actor, writer, director. I got a... I got a secret project that Dave was involved in that he directed, and and yeah, so he's a very talented. Taking up for his papa. So he's yeah. uh, he's a way, but you yeah. know he was a drummer, natural yeah. drummer. Oh yeah. You know, and he used to play. He was like ten. He used to play tabletops yeah. with all you know his thumb and all his yeah. fingers. Yeah. Like, burr, 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 and I'm like, you know, kid, people don't do that. And his mom got him some drums, and and the, the teacher came out and was like, oh, he can do this. And yeah. He played him before, so it's like. And he was like, yeah, maybe I'll put that on hold, too. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, but. He's uh, the problem of being out creative. Shout to Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, son. I do that for fun on the podcast. Leave the phone on. And yeah, yeah. No, you got to. Get I had a, call a friend in. call from federal prison, and I didn't pick it up. Oh, no, really? I didn't pick it up. That would have been gold. Yeah, well, I pick the up one. these other ones. Why I know. Are you not going to pick up the prison one? Yeah. <laughs> What's the best first sentence you've heard answering the phone on the podcast? Oh, uh, I don't think I've had a great one. I mean, not nah. that I can think of. We'll start calling you at random. Yeah, yeah. 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 Usually he's like, kind of uh, uh, "Hey, you're on like, the podcast," and then they're like, "Uh, uh, uh I gotta call go. you back." Before I say I'm on the podcast, someone come up and like, "I just got the best BJ." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're on the. Podcast. I was delivering pizza in Granada Hills. Yeah. And <laughs> I know the spot. <laughs> I could have gone in for a few yeah. things. I was young and had brown hair at the time, so. But, yeah, um, at least they needed an extra. Yeah, so you were right in the middle of... Uh, oh, no, I was right in the middle of asking you, have you met my hero, No, Kate, Kate Blanchett. Blanchett? No, I have not. No, no, no I haven't man. met many Australian heroes. You actually met Russell Crowe, though, even I though he's a Kiwi. But yeah, you know, I, yeah, yeah but that's so, funny. Yeah. Everybody always... Yeah, and everybody, you said you met him, too. Yeah, you I, worked on a I, movie with him, right? I, I, I said... Yeah, that's right. We were in the van. I yeah. said my usual line. I made, a, I made a film once with two unknown Australian actors. Russell Crowe and Guy Pierce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because LA Confidential is what made them. Yeah, you know, yeah. famous. Well, Guy Pierce had already done Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, okay. which was a, which was a great, great film. Yeah, LA Just, Confidential. I've yeah. seen that for years. It's yeah. a classic. Though you were in LA Confidential. Yeah. What character were you? I'm the guy uh, over the punch bowl that says the racist comment comments and instigates again. the riot with the Mexicans down to the jail cell. We all run down and start That's brawling. Been years since I watched it, I'll watch it again. Yeah. Right? Run the clip. Yeah, honestly, yeah right pull the it clip. up. Yeah, like, I want right. to see it. Shout out to LA Confidential. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Uh, did you make other you? Like, did you stick with YouTube? So after what the, happened was I started long video. Yeah, I, I kept doing it right, and then um, you know, so I'm at like 500 subscribers, like you know, 700 view, uh, like 7,000 views maybe, 
and all subscribers are people you interact with. You know, it's like I subscribe to you, you subscribe to me, like a small community. And then my cousin um, hacked my page and deleted all my videos. You know, I think it's like this hyper competitive, like cousin rivalry because I didn't have a brother sibling, you know, and he. What the fuck? I know. I know. I don't really want to get too deep. It's like water under the bridge. You know, it's like we're 11 years old. It ain't water under the bridge because you're an artist. (laughs) It's going to bother me the rest of my life. Well, honestly, if that didn't happen, though, I don't know if I'd be here today because that motivated me then to like really get into the marketing because I'm like, I want to get back to that 7,000 views quick, you know? And so I'm like, what I did in six months, I want to be able to do in a week. And that really flipped the switch of like thinking about- Shout out to the cousin who motivated him. Thank you. So, you know, do that and then I get in more in the marketing things and then there was all these hacks I found. Like, I actually used to have a YouTube channel called Cap, C-A-P, and um, it was like an old YouTube channel. So, I'd subscribe to people and I'd get in the top of their, like, subscriber box because on channels I used to show you, like, like a close friend's, like, oh, yeah, show you subscribers, that, yeah. but, like, the oldest accounts that have subscribed to you. And so I'd do that, and then I'd put, like, an avatar with, like, a girl, like, scantily dressed, you know, so yeah. all these dudes click on it or girls click on it, and they then watch my videos, you know. So yeah. got into that, and then I started, like, reviewing music in, like, 2012, and I'd pretend it's the actual music video, so some sh- shady shit, but I'm, like, a kid. I don't really understand morals or ethics, but, you know, so it'd be, like, Eminem's new music video. You click on it, then you hear, like, a prepubescent Australian boy be, like, so this music video should be cool, right? And then, so I was making, like, four or five grand a month from that at, like, 14. Jesus. Um, and so I was, like, damn, I can actually do this. Like, this is a real, this could potentially be a real, like, job, you know? Right. And then, so I got, you know, interested in that. And then, long story short, from there, we start building these Facebook pages, Twitter accounts, and we raised, like, a couple million dollars in venture capital, Moved out to America. That was like a total scam. We never work with venture capitalists again, or at least the ones I had worked with. They're just yeah. like cockroaches. And also a couple of the founders had fucked me over. It was horrible. Bad deal. But then from there, it let me, you know, be in America. I went to USC, got to meet Ivy. So if all these, you know, things didn't happen, it's weird because when you look back, you're like, if I had done one thing different, like the yeah, whole thing, yeah. you know, if I had thought too hard about anything, like none of it would have happened, you know? Yeah. But in the time, you don't think like that. Like I was super depressed, you know, like I was worth millions of dollars on paper and then overnight I'm like worth nothing, you know, because right. mm-hmm. I signed a bad deal because I thought I was 17 and if you're 17 and you raise all this money, you must be smarter than everyone. It was my own fault that I didn't get a lawyer to look at the contract, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Happens. And, and I was much older and my business you know the the big delivery service it you know someone acquired it and that went down in a bad way yeah but i learned it yeah. never yeah. happened again yeah, yeah. so yeah, i'm exactly. glad you learned at that age exactly i got lucky honestly i was a lot older when i learned yeah, it, yeah. but yeah i was also very <laughs> depressed at the time but anyway man yeah. it's a life lesson it I, is. I have gotten out of a couple of business uh, startups. Uh, not, I mean, whenever you hear a startup, I only think of e-commerce or something. Right. But, you know, an acting school with someone else yeah. as a partner and uh, doing else is something else. And then I'm like, nope. Yep. No, yeah. it's, uh, no it's not going to go down. A hundred percent. You know. And then I'll tell you a story. Like, this was a little bit different because it wasn't like the team was great. It was just more about the market conditions and everything. But we were going to do an NFT earlier this year, right? Yeah. Like, at the at the end of last year, our buddy, he helped Justin Bieber with his NFT project, right. right? Went super successful. And this was when the NFT market was starting to reach its peak. And crypto was worth, like, Ethereum was worth, like, three, four grand. I got... You know, and I'd been into crypto for a little bit and then got out of it. And then I saw this and, you know, you get FOMO again. Mm -hmm. And so me and Ivy, we sunk about like 30 grand into this project. And like until this year, like even with last year, we had 20 million followers, but we weren't getting really brand deals. Like this year, we've actually started to make real money. But at the time when we put the 30 grand in, we weren't making real money. You know, Yeah, that was like a dead period for us. We were like fucking like felt unemployed we were 100%. just like and we just got presented this and we we're like fuck it we have not to doing you know anything else right now. so we put 30 grand in and we were just feeling sick about the project the market's tanking we're like yeah. how much do we want to commit to this it's distracting from the music and like we ended up you know calling them and saying hey boys like we're going to eat the costs on all this any cost you've incurred we'll pay you but we need to kill this project you yeah. know and they were super <clears throat> understanding they're like cool i think a couple of them took the ip and have gone done their own thing yeah. but but like that was the best decision we ever made this year. Yeah, Out of everything yeah. we've done this year, the best decision was 
pulling out of this thing because like the headache it was going to be. Yeah. And every day you see how bad NFTs are. I'm just thankful to go. Right. Like, we've made some good decisions this year. The best one was not doing something, even after yeah. we'd already put in 30 grand. Right. We just like, we just knew like if we were even going to do something like that, because we had seen like friends do it right and actually build like a brand that can like sustain. We were like, we don't have the resources or the yeah, time or and the, the team right. or the like just to keep this afloat and right now. And then the market crop. The exactly. Thing? So it was uh, just like the yeah. stigma behind it. We were like, yeah. yo, like we're going to provide a sick project, yeah. but it's just like people all yeah. by There's default are just like, like scam. Yeah, yeah, NFT, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah, hype it so. up and then it's just totally. Abandoned. So you got to yeah. match what these scammers are saying that they're never going to do to get your project hype. Yeah. But then it's like, we actually want to deliver on that. And when we yeah. realize we've, promise so much that i don't know how the fuck we can deliver on this i'm like we just cannot mint this project i yeah. don't want anyone to lose money but us yeah because if we're going to do party show till the day we die and we lose our reputation today over what right. even let's just say it did really well and we made a mill. yeah right long term that's not really worth it you right. know no. yeah no. after freaking everyone's fees taxes and all this we walk out with maybe 150 grand for our reputation yeah. also just would feel sick if yeah. someone lost a dollar you know right. on, on us yeah. so no, that's good. What, yeah. Was uh, Luca involved in that project? Luca Nets? Yeah. No, he wasn't. But yeah. actually, if he did, I might have gone ahead with it. Like Luca's, of course, you know Luca through. Je I'm guessing Jesse. Well, yeah. But yesterday we had Reed Clow on here, and Reed was uh, Luca's assistant for at least a year or yeah. two, or work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, did he but, mention that I came to the office or something? Or? Oh, well, yeah. He, I said you guys were coming yeah. in. He goes, yeah. yeah, Luca worked with them. Yeah, for no, yeah, Luca's like Luca. the boy, and he's. He's vouched for us before we had any type of credibility. Yeah. Like, so, you know, go back in time a little bit. During the pandemic, we had to stop DJing because right. obviously where we're going to play. Right. And that's when we turned to TikTok. We were already DJing for four years before. We are making a little bit of content, but it wasn't really the focus. And then so the pandemic happens and, you know, so everyone's on TikTok and we use TikTok to promote our music. Yeah. And we're like, okay, well, we're going to have to make something more pop leaning. So we make this sort of disco pop Dua Lipa, Doja Cat type song, right? Yeah. Which is like away from the house techno right. background we're from. Because we're like, we, you know, we've got to do something that's going to appeal to the masses. Right. And, and then so we make this song, it starts blowing up, you know, record labels start hitting us up. And so, and then I, I reached out to Luca because there was this management company called The Lights Global. And at the time we didn't have really any representation. We didn't have an agent. We didn't have a manager. And I was like, this company called The Lights Global had gotten this artist called Little Pump an $8 million deal and Dominic Fike a $4 million deal. And Dominic Fike and Little Pump make totally different music. Like Dominic yeah. Pop Fibes in Euphoria now. He does like this indie yeah. type crap and Little Pump makes Little Pump music, you yeah. know, like SoundCloud rap. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, if this company can get these two totally different artists, these record-breaking deals, like what could they do for us? And I knew them from back in the social media days because they managed Alex from Target. Mm. which was like a, so you know he went on the Allen show i'm like yeah. these guys are true hustlers yeah. you know and so i hit up luca because i'd known him from back in the day because he used to manage supreme patty and i did like sure. some crap with supreme patty yeah like they promoted like they used to have this like giveaway crap and so i hit up luca i'm like hey dude can you introduce me to these people and he's like i want to come to the meeting i want to be involved comes vouches for us and this was the best meeting we, of all time. This meeting has gone down in the books. We tell everyone. We went in there and we just had like the perfect synergy. And we just fucking fucked this deal up or this fucking I meeting know. up. Like they are like, they literally were like, you know, Dominic fight got $4 million. But the way you guys talk, we think we can get you guys $6 million. We were like, what the fuck? And in like, LA, everyone you know, blows smoke up your yeah, ass. Yeah, you like, and that like, was like our first like meeting where we experienced like, I guess like, Smoke blowing Exactly. Ass, but it know? was like the fact that they had done that for Dominic Fike right. and yeah. Lil Pump. You know, it's like yeah. these guys aren't just like, you right. know, anyone can tell you they'll get you $4 million. Have you ever gotten anyone else $4 million? You know, yeah. like yeah. these yeah. guys have done it. These guys twice. have it on paper, like twice. the numbers. So right. we were like, we come out of this fucking meeting. We're like, dude, holy shit, we're millionaires. Like, let's fucking go. Like, it was, yeah. And then obviously we're not millionaires. And then we get so. the contracts. and <laughs> Ah, the yeah. contracts were horrible. Yeah. Oh, the worst of all time. Our lawyers just like, these literally look like they were written by gangsters. I was right. like, all right, we're going to turn it away. But Luca's always, he's like the hype man. Because, you know, when you meet people, you obviously like, and you, you're trying to do a deal with them, you want them to know your accomplishments. But yeah. if you say it, it sort of invalidates right. it. It's like, okay, yeah. now you're just talking. So you right. need a guy yeah. on the side who's That's like a on. neutral he third party. Yeah. He was there going, bro, bro. Yeah. Bro, yeah, yeah. You know, these guys you know are the next big thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I know Luke is the boy, and he's <laughs> no, he's look. 
I don't want to fuck around. I, Luke is a fucking genius. Man. Yeah, he yeah, really he's is. a fuck. He he Hustler can get it done. So yeah, I just want he to. He's one of a. He honestly like that guy's going to be a billionaire. Yeah, yeah. you just know. Yeah. Like, there's only a few people I've met that I'm like are going to be billionaires, and Luke is one. And another, like, I've got like three or four people like that. Another one of them, this guy who got me, helped me get my visa to America initially. Right. When I met him, I'm like, this guy's going to be a billionaire. And his name's Lockie Groom. He's a couple years older than me. And he was an early employee at Stripe, like one of the 20th employees. So he made a fuck ton there. But after he left, he became a VC. Now he's managing over a billion dollars. Right. And, he's, and I'm Crazy. like... Like, right. I've got a good instinct. So, Luca, right. you Luca, you know Luca, you're about to be manifesting this Luca, for you right Luca now. Luca and I spent a few days on a uh, RV. In oh, a, in hell a, yeah. In a, in a beater RV. We were talking about this yesterday. We went to Arizona on an RV in the summer with an RV that's, uh, that's air conditioning was questionable. Oh, there we go. So, I yeah. feel like they always so, are. And then we had an Airbnb together that Tori got, and Eggs, Eggs was there. Florentine. Shout out to Florentine. Shout out uh, Eggs. Huh? Shout out Eggs. Shout out, well, well, I call him, his name, his nickname is Eggs, and one day I was fucking with him, he told me to put some respect on his name, so I started calling him Florentine, (laughs) Florentine, but yeah, so we spent some time doing it, um, you know, in the RV together, and uh, Lucas. Was this for the gun thing he's got? No, we were just doing doing content for Shithole, we we went to Arizona and and did a bunch of pranks and stuff, so. And so I saw Jesse, I'm sure you've seen, you know, the other day he came back, he's like, this is why I sold full send, so are you talking now? Oh yeah, I mean, I knew. knew. Of course, but I mean, like, because you were saying you were waiting for him to sort of announce that before you do content with him again, so you're going to get back into that grand Oh, I don't know, I mean, that's up to him, so I don't don't know what what we're going to do, I haven't talked to him recently. Right. I'm trying to get them out here. Yeah, I yeah. haven't. I mean, I just got to ask. But you know, we just wanted to get some some stuff rolling here, so I'd like to get them. I don't know. I enjoyed working with. Yeah, them. yeah. You know, we had a good connection. We did a lot of good things. But so we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah so he, yeah. So he 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 told it. I guess you know. I guess Kyle said some nice things. You yeah. Know, there was a lot of animosity there for a minute. But That's what like, I've heard too. Like they've well, come yeah. out and they've made it seem like, oh, you know, it's just fucking shit happens. And I'm sure anyone who's sort of in the scene a little bit sort of yeah. knows it was not, yeah. you know, yeah. chill yeah. at yeah. all. Yeah. To yeah. the public, I think they want to keep it. Of that course. It's like yeah. 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 So well, really but like... the thing is now it seems like in the public they're supporting each other and that'll be right. really good for Jesse and his new totally. company in the long run. So totally. that's, that's, hey, man. Things happen, and you know, yeah. how does it get resolved? Right, it seems exactly. like it's been resolved in a good totally. way. So, yeah, he put out that video, got like a million, million views, yeah. like pretty quick. Yeah, and we weren't getting that for a while at the end of shithole, but I think because shithole was called shithole, right, it wasn't yeah. getting in the uh, of algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> because in the beginning the shooting uh, yourself in the butt. <laughs> right away. It's the a first, hell of a name, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, the first two vids we did got a million. Like right away, yeah, and then it started going downhill. So yeah, like, what the fuck? Some of them yeah. were pretty good. So, but right now, David and I are working on um, on hit the series that he came up with, and uh, and it's going real well. We got some real good content out of it. So, and then and then I'm um, you know, I'm gonna start putting up uh, MTV Gramps on TikTok. Oh, fuck again. Oh, yeah, I yeah, because we hadn't posted for a year. <laughs> yeah, well. Waiting for the the dust to settle, yeah, right. you know, because that, that was all part of that. And now totally. the one I'm going to put up is Gramps on a freeway off ramp with a um, a sign with a walker and hanging off the walker is the cardboard sign that says, yeah. we'll fuck for food. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> oh, we need to call us and we'll come, we'll come stop by. We'll bring some, we'll bring some food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Delivery style, yeah. Granada Hills. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I've so, been thinking of how, how we could write you guys into I'd in love, yeah, we're yeah, down. Yeah, we're always, we're always down. down. Yeah, yeah you guys fun. said you were doing a commercial you want, it might want to be Yeah, so of, what so. we were doing, and honestly, why we, like, I want to use you for something else. I didn't want to do, because... Because you're too recognizable. So this one, I went, I got all the actors off backstage because, okay. you know, back, if you're on backstage, sure. mm-hmm. no one knows you. Yeah. Where we are. <laughs> no offense to backstage, but you got to start somewhere. But yeah. like, right. you know, I didn't even want to use LA casting because I didn't want people who have even been in anything, right. you know? Right. And so fucking backstage. Oh my God, backstage. And so friggin', you know, you get like 400 applicants and like these reels are tough to watch. Yeah. Tough yeah. to watch. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then, then they don't show up, dude. Then they don't fucking show up. They don't show up. 
And you know, can I blame him? It's like a hundred bucks for like a two hour shoot. Like, dude, I you, you know what I would have done for a hundred bucks on a shoot starting out? I know. I, shooting out is, it's like gold. I know. Yeah. I don't even really want to talk because I think commercials haven't come out. I don't want to speak on these people, but just that level of unprofessionalism with yeah. some of them. There was, don't get me wrong, there were some that were very professional yeah. there on time, knew what they were doing. Mm-hmm. You could tell it true to the craft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the others is just like, Fucking, you should move back to Ohio because you're wasting like, your what time. The fuck, right. like right. if you want to pursue this yeah. shit, like they're acting like it's a fucking like you know hobby or it's like no, yeah. if you want to be a fucking actor, take this shit serious. So, yeah. Like so, Philip Seymour Hoffman has, uh, you know, God bless him, rest in peace, yeah, phenomenal right. actor. He has uh, a video that I show to every student that comes to my school, every student. And it's a couple minutes long. It's after he won. Was it the was it Academy Award or Golden Globe? I mean, I think it was Academy I Award. I forget which one. Yeah, it was. he. I mean, he won. He won. It was probably Academy Award. And they said, "Do you have any advice for young actors?" And he said, "You know, he really ponders it." And the girl starts to explain it, and he's like, "I know what you mean." <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. He says that when you're starting out, or you know, basically any time, if there's someone who's paid rent for a space, yeah. he goes, even if you don't like the project, even if you don't think you're right for it. But someone has paid money for this space. You show up and do the absolute best job yeah. you can because if you do that, they will not forget. Yeah. You know what I mean? Try, and that's no, what he says. And I, and I show that to every new or older person. Just that's the fucking truth. You show up and you do your best. Yep. But I know. Because the one that I, did the best stood out. And we remember yeah. and we, we sure. couldn't talk about fucking, good enough yeah. things about this person because they stood out out of the crowd. So. Yeah. We put on a Q&A, John Levy, shout out to John, legendary casting director, cast China Beach, ER, West Wing, uh, Shameless, and Animal Kingdom. This guy is just, a, you yeah. know, he's just an unbelievable eye for talent. And we put it out to everybody we could. It's like, you got to come up. This guy's the dude, and he's selling a book, and his book is fucking great. And we said, everybody, all and young actors, old actors. I had people who've been acting 30, 40 years come on there. And we had 114 people sign up. 57, half showed up. I believe half it. showed up to this guy who gave some great advice. Yeah. Great advice. The name of the book is called Right for the Role. And I said, how do you know you're right for the role? And he said, and I never heard this, but he goes, he goes just t- t- you know, be aware of how people treat you. Yeah. Because that's who you are. Yeah. And I was like, shit, you know, because everybody comes out here, wants to be a leading man or lady. Of course. And a story Beth Grant tells. Beth Grant has been in uh, two, three hundred projects. She was on the Mindy Project for for years. She was, you know, her first job in L.A. was in Rain Man when they go to watch, uh, you know, Wapner. She's the one that opens the door in the middle of nowhere. She was in Donnie Darko, the mom. She was. Oh, she no played way. in Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah, being she, in everything. She, she's the bitch that don't want to <clears throat> let them come in and perform because they're late. She she wanted to be like a leading lady, and her teacher, Milton Casales, at the uh, Beverly Hills Play, Playhouse was like, uh, no, honey, this is who you are. And told her her casting, and she's never stopped working. She's a great actress. She's a great person. Yes. Shout out, shout out, Miss G, good friend of mine. <laughs> played my wife before in films. Shout out to her husband, Michael Chifo. I've never done this yeah, before. I love Michael, it. Michael <laughs> was in. Sorry, shout out some people. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Michael was in LA Confidential uh, and a ton of other things. They're both yeah. very good actors. And uh, Mary Chifo, their daughter, is now making her name. And just and, on that, like about the, you know, knowing sort of like your role and like, be, like I'm the best supporting actor. If yeah. you can know that early and like go all in on that, you're going to win so much more yeah. than someone who's yeah. like, I need to be the Brad Pitt. I right. need to be the Leo. And I'm only going to take parts or I'm only going to take it serious when I'm right. the Leo. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, there's one Leonardo DiCaprio, one Brad Pitt. Like right. 25,000 people move to LA every year to be actors. How many do we know? Right. You know, right. and the thing is, most of them, they're already children of famous actors. Right. So, you know, it's like if we even really broke it down to how many people that actually moved to LA become successful actors, it's few and far between. Right. So, right. it was like the Dumb and Dumber guys. It was Jim Carrey and who's the, I forgot the name of the other guy. Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. And he talked about it. He's like, after, you know, Dumb and Dumber, like I wanted to do this art house shit and the industry didn't want me, but he's like, I knew I was never a leading man. 
And, you know, he's like, he had to sort of accept that and find his place and sort of really lean into that supporting actor role, right. you know? And then he became a leading man, which he is now, you know, from Newsroom, which is a phenomenal Raw, I haven't seen show. it, but I've heard it's yeah. incredible. Oh, it's but... phenomenal. And the thing is, I get mad because Jeff Daniels was my, they'd say, yeah. who's most underrated actor? Yeah. I'd say Jeff Daniels. He was my, my secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got in our Newsroom and he's phenomenal. Right, it's like, bam, yeah. now he's in the... You know, now he's in the public yeah, eye right, again, yeah, where yeah. he's supposed to be because yeah. he's fucking has a theater company, yeah. he trains, he does theater, does Broadway, and he's just a great actor. Yeah. And he, you know, has a lot of respect for the craft. Yeah. So yeah. grinded out that supporting yeah. role. To, yeah, so to totally. And he just talked yeah. about how he had moved because he wanted to like do the Hollywood thing, but then he moved to the mountains to raise his kids because he wanted to raise his kids out of Hollywood, but then right. that fucked his career because. But here's a question for you, because you've sort of seen the evolution of the industry. Who's someone, one that you didn't expect to be a massive actor that you knew sort of, you know, coming up that became big? And then second of all, is there someone you met that like this person's a superstar and they sort of pissed it all away before they got there? Oh, God. That, that I met a hundred of those. I'm not... There's a friend of mine. She didn't piss it all away. Uh, shout out to Mary E. <laughs> I've never done this before. I love it. This was a woman in my beginning acting class who was so effing talented. And she really was. She, was re she really was. She was a petite uh, woman, young, glasses, long hair, long blonde hair. And she just couldn't. She just said, I just don't like the business, Brian. You know, and she yeah. got married, had a couple kids. She, she, she's great. I mean, she's great. Her life is good. But I've seen these people come in that I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Mm. And then they either do self-destruction or they don't promote it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a, I, not a victim, not a victim of that. I'm, I'm someone who did that too, who, who just had a lot of mishigas, as I call it, that, that Yiddish term is the only way. I'd, and I'd have got my own way. You know what I mean? But I've seen people do that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. So when I first started acting, I did a, a oh, my God cut this out patrick warburton he was on seinfeld the voice who, who did he play on seinfeld i just forgot the fuck not puffy what was his name uh he's pulling it up right now pull it up. oh my fucking god we're cutting this out for yeah. sure yeah. it we're just blew out of my mind okay, oh yeah, this guy yeah, okay, yeah. yeah holy shit so we did a play together and he's a great guy and i've run into him over the years yeah. he's really cool but we did a play before i had done any kind of film or or anything and uh, what's the name on Seinfeld? Scott? We got His to look it up. Da yeah, David Putty on Seinfeld. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Seinfeld. and he's dating a Elaine, Elaine, yeah. Elaine, right? Yeah, and so yeah, Elaine. Yeah, and so he's a guy that I was in a play with. Great guy. Uh, we played brothers, and we this play ran for quite some time. And uh, you know, I think he was married back then. Big, good-looking dude. Chicks were hitting on him, and he was not, you know, as far as I knew, he was yeah. not going for it. Yeah, I shouldn't say as far as I knew, he wasn't going right, for wasn't it. Yeah. And I think he's still with his wife. They got four kids or something. Yeah. And he was just a dude. Yeah. Well, he's never stopped working. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. he plays Joe on, in the wheelchair on That's, The Simpsons. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh my fam God. Well, well, family guy. Family guy. Yeah. Family, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Close Cut enough. that out too. Yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Dang no, he's it, man. probably fucking what killing the I gotta man. ask, is he always like that? Like you know, every movie's and he's yeah. like fucking well, his no, eyes aren't no, out. That, is that like no, his like no, how well, that's his, his I mean, eyes I guess are? That's his thing, but that's not what he was like in the play. And he was. I'm like um, even looking at look at that photo right there. No. That's what he looks. <laughs> like, he I feel like he's like always like that. Joe he's staring into the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like Joe. And so I mean, that's a guy that I worked with when he was nobody, and then. You know, and of course, I worked with James Franco when he was 19, but That's he, I worked with him for 15 years on projects. So, you say uh, Jeff always had it together? Jeff Goldblum? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeff Goldblum was focused. He was one of my first acting teachers. And so he was, uh, he was always focused. And, you know, Jeff liked to go to parties. Yeah. He liked to do a lot of things back in the day. He was young. I met him 30 years ago. Yeah, I met him when Jurassic Park was being filmed. Right. Crazy. And um, it wasn't a drinker or anything that I knew of. You know, but he liked to go to parties, like to hang out, like to do stuff. And he and he always told me in the beginning, he goes, you get the script. <clears throat> you know, had the old, no no cell phones. His phone gets unplugged and that's it. Yep. You know, and he had someone who came over, break down the script with him. But that, that was it. So, hey, I like to do this, like the ladies, I like this. And all of a sudden, get the script, bam. Love the, yeah. And that was it. And he focused until he, uh, you until know, he he, it, he's yeah. he's funny. So this is, 
This is 91 because it's when my son was born. I was working in Santa Monica, and I'm walking down the street going to lunch, and he's filming Deep Cover. And so he's standing outside of this place. I'm like, hey, Jeff. He goes, hey, Brian. You know, but he's very serious. like, hey, Brian. Yeah. You know, and I'm doing this part in this play called Welcome Home Soldier. And uh, we're, in a, we're in a bar and a Vietnam vet comes in and we really treat him like shit. And this play was about the, the, taking the Vietnam vet's side. So in this one scene, you know, we were horrific to the guy. But the play was about you know, getting the voice and getting, we had all these, mostly monologues gotten from the vets. So we took their side of what happened right. and, and gave them, you know, dignity. Yeah. And it was a really, really groundbreaking thing. But I, at this, I just started, I was a new actor and I was in this scene and I was playing a hippie. It was called the hippie bar scene. Yeah. And the, and the uh, guy comes in to get a drink and we just run him out yeah. and treat him like a fucking asshole. And so Jeff's sitting there talking to me. And he's like, he's like, you know, that scene you're in, you said, he, he said, like, you got to understand, you got to understand that side of it. I know that we're taking the side of, because he was part of the yeah. theater company, because I know we're taking the side of it, but you got to know that the hippies, they had their own thing. Yeah. And he was telling me, he was real serious, just drilling me. And if my eyes, if my eyes went like this, he slapped me in the face. Yeah. yeah. And he was in the play with you or he just came to watch you? No, he came to, he was part of the theater okay. company. Yeah. He was a teacher okay. and all this. Yeah. You know, I've done plays with him since. Yeah. Telling me. A little I, smack? And, like... Yeah. 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 And it'd be like this and I'd be like this and he go, yeah. and he go, he goes, this is important. You know, what happened was they had their own, they, you know, they had their point of view. It was very yeah. important. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. I believe so, you. Yeah. So, yeah, so wait a minute. Wild. So now he goes in to do the scene. I don't know. I leave. Yeah. I watch the movie. And that's the kind of scene it is yeah. where he's telling someone, you know, they're in this, they're in this store and, yeah. and, and he's telling someone, look, this is how it is. You know what I mean? Smacking yeah. the person in the no, scene? No, he didn't, he didn't uh. smack them. <laughs> but what he was doing with me is yeah, he he's, was he's just rehearsing. He, it, he was almost, rehearsing yeah. the improvisation with me and cracking me in the face a couple of times. <laughs> that's good. You he's know what I mean? Himself. What and, a ledge. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's, you know, Jeff just does what needs to be that's done dope. and he's, uh, you know, he's he's helped me on projects, and he's been a, been a friend. He's very, very kind and generous to me. He's a um, funny guy. Yeah. Okay, so, Ivy, how are you? I'm great, When man. did you get here? Fucking, I don't know, honestly. I just so, ended up in something that looks like our apartment, honestly. So, <laughs> yeah. I, love I may, it, I you may have said this to you on the shoot, but you, what, uh, this is what I would say to people who say they come from the OC. Oh, man. Right? Yeah. That you say OC, but you don't claim a city. Nah, I mean, it's, it's like, especially like South OC, it's like, oh, it's all right. micro cities, yeah. you know, like yeah. to get from one area oh, to the other. Oh, we talked about San yeah. Clemente, right? Yeah, San yeah. Clemente, San Juan Capistrano, right, Dana right. Point, Laguna Beach, yeah. that's like all one city to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so you're from South, Yeah. the South OC. Yeah. yeah, I told you about staying at San Clemente Inn, and there was no homes built yep. all the way and to the fucking... and now they're just all yeah. there, yeah. 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 Still a great drive, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. GCH, yeah. Oh, man. I can't believe the San Clemente Inn's still there. You figured that, know, that yeah. location that they'd build something I huge know. there right off, right off the freeway off ramp. It's crazy because now I feel like they're developing South OC so much. Like, it's right. like driving down, like, the freeway when you pass, you know, like, going through Mission Viejo, you know? Right. Everything's like, I'm like, holy shit, I don't recognize this place right. anymore. It's only been three years. It's wild. Yeah. They're starting to get after it. But looking up on the hill from the uh, San Clemente Inn, there was so few houses up there back in the day. I know, and now that's where oh they're my. starting to develop. <laughs> houses are, every time I yeah. go, there's like a whole new like development started yeah. up there. I'm like, yeah. wow. like. And that's the thing that people, that developers don't understand because they only understand money. is right. like. We want to move here because it's quiet and it's cool and That's everything's the thing. cool. Yeah, we want and, to look at those rolling hills yeah. and not see houses. Yeah. you know. So, yeah, and they're like, yeah, but people want to move there. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, I know. We're just gonna throw up shite. Now they're putting up a shit ton of apartment complexes no, too. Shit. I know it's oh. getting weird down there. Wow. So, what were your influences? Did you want to? Yeah. Did you play music? Did you go to a lot of concerts? I never asked you that. So, but did you go to a lot of concerts? Yeah, and who was it, your first concert? I think it was a Doobie brother. I oh, think it was no a Doobie way. brother. Fucking yeah. Great. Honestly, I was just listening to my two parents. Days ago. Mine was Black Sabbath at the Hollywood. No Bowl. way. Yeah. Yeah. What year? <laughs> 71. 71. Yeah, so that was like was early, dude. Yeah. Fuck. Was, yeah. That was like. Is that like War Pigs era? Yeah. I think yeah. 
Dude, yeah. Sabbath is like one of my favorites. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. That's so sick. Oh, you can sing oh, like oh, Sabbath, oh, too. Oh, God. Yeah, we did singing lessons, and our teacher was like, you know, you have a voice that's like Ozzy Osbourne and Prince. And, like, he would have me, like, sing Black what Sabbath. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. yeah. That we'll is an incredible the karaoke yeah. I was like, I know. I was like, that's a cool combo. Yeah. Right there. Was, yeah. Well, well, that wasn't smoke, was it? I mean, yeah. you could, that's no, a that was, no, he was, no, I'm just saying. Legit. It, no, this guy was He was Wow, dude. What the fuck? And this guy was a Classic. Why didn't I talk to you first? Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta hear him sing. But like the, the singing instructor was so, he's like the classic. You know how you got these like ideas of caricatures of probably like LA acting teachers. Right. You know, he was the caricature of Dude, an LA yeah. vocal coach. Right. You know, got a store on Hollywood Boulevard. Long gray hair you know b belly he's got a six pack at every like this guy's in a metal band i'd like death metal band but he's got an insane voice like a beautiful voice like can sing all styles like the shit we were doing like when we'd go to these classes like like we had we'd do like what two hours or an hour yeah we'd book we'd book in two hours but we'd be lucky if we first get... hour would be like us he'd be like all right i just need you guys to like help me move some shit out of my <laughs> car <laughs> no i swear to god the like... person before us lesson would run over time yeah right we get in there we'd have to move shit for him yeah he'd he'd either bring a six pack or make us pick up a six pack yeah. from the store next door <laughs> yeah. we're, we're on some, some miyagi shit yeah, 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 yeah really right. Right. honestly like, hate this fence. honestly this except so we never learned how to fucking execute the movement yeah here. Uh, so I mean, after a couple of months, it was just like uh, this isn't going anywhere. Yeah. But it was a fun experience, yeah. you know. It was really fun, yeah. Yeah. And then we it sort of just coincided with like the social media like getting big again. So then we got back into that, and then yeah. we realized again like why the fuck did we get away from electronic music? And this is our true passion, right. you know. Like we're just doing the music thing to right. do the music thing at this point. Like let's get back. But, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, get back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so obviously you're a Sabbath fan. You like metal and stuff. I love it. I love like all music, like yeah. world music. My dad's super into music. Oh, like, okay. He isn't like play instruments, but he's just like the yeah. guy that like a song comes right. on, sings every fucking yeah. word to it, you yeah, know, like annoying. across all genres. So, you yeah. Know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, He'd be in the car and like, I like the song, dad. Yeah. <laughs> so and he's like, oh, I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's no, cool yeah. though. That's cool. So where, where was your dad from? My dad's from Boston. Oh, shit. Yeah. My family's from Holyoke, Massachusetts. Well, he's from Swansea, so okay. it's like, I just say Boston because yeah. no one knows where Swansea is. My mother's from the South Bronx. But anyway, so okay. your dad's from Boston. He came out here. Yeah, he came out here. I'm actually born in Vegas because he was a pro boxer, so we lived out there. And then my mom really? was like, yeah, I'm going to leave you if you keep doing this. Forget that shit. I just talked yeah. about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a good guy when he's sleeping. You know? <laughs> um, but then, yeah, we moved out here. Just played sports my whole life and loved music just because my dad's such a music head. And, right. Um, yeah. I mean, high school was like, that was like really when I fell in love with like the shit that we make right now, like right. dance music, right. you know, and then started messing around, like making beats then. And then like, I was a great athlete. So like I was getting pressured into do like college sports and shit. And then didn't have the courage to say no. So went to college for lacrosse and dropped out after a semester and be like Syracuse where'd you go no I went to Whittier College yeah yeah some (laughs) low-key yeah I wish it was Syracuse I would I probably would have stayed there if it was Syracuse yeah but now yeah dropped out went to community college and the community college had like a classical music like right it was like they had their own separate music school pretty much and the department chair made like an electronic music production class so I took that and we had a bunch of like insane producers in the class. So she ended up like making it like a full, like, I think it ended up being like a year and a half or like two years worth of like classes, you know? And so by the end of it, it was just like, go to class, make music all day. And right. that was kind of it. Just worked after that for like two years, saved up $2,500 and just, we moved in together. Oh, you didn't go to USC? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. I would he, just, he, like, live on his couch. Yeah, stuff. like, because I was he working. Can't... So if I had, like, a week off, I'd just be like, yo, I'm coming up. Like, take the train up and just sleep yeah. on the couch for a week. Oh, or just cool. make music. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's was awesome. Good. Yeah. So, and then you guys, as you said, you went to Chicago and... Went to Chicago. Yeah, that was, like... Oh, man. Spirit Airlines, like this was our uh, Chicago. I've been on Spirit. This is our yeah. Chicago experience, and it happened to us. Oh, okay. So we're we're going on Spirit, you know. Pay for your seatbelt. Yeah, oh. right. Exactly for fucking <laughs> clean brain. air. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we get there, and they're like, "Oh wait, no, your your tickets are actually for like two weeks." 
from now. And we were like, we didn't have like money back then. We're just like, what the fuck? Like X is like, nah, dude, we're fucking doing this. I'll just throw it on my credit card. Like, don't worry about it. Like, so we're like, okay. And that evidently happened to us yeah. again, like last year. I know. Year. Yeah. yeah. Like there's something spirit. weird with spirit where if you go to book a flight and you yeah. try to book it right there and you put the date in, once you click that date and it takes you to the website, it pushes you back two weeks, I, like I randomly. Weeks. I don't know why it does that. Like, and they, you haven't learned? We talk about learning well, things. Well, fucking but you hell. Learned. We didn't know what we, we fucked We're up a sucker on. for yeah. a cheap. We flew yeah. spirit last <laughs> week. We're a sucker for a cheap. Flight, to be fair, one of our managers booked it. He booked it on a skip leg, this and that. We're still starving artists. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> a funny thing is when we're, when we're at the airport, Rob, we get there early like because of the flight with, you know, a week earlier. So we have to pay the grand and our flights yeah, for right, like four hours early. later. And anyway, we come back later Thanks, and this sir. person, we're trying to get in and this person pushes in acting super entitled. And it's frigging, I think it's Janice from The Sopranos. It's right. Tony's wife. Right. Being a brute as. And left a bad taste in my mouth. I haven't watched Soprano <laughs> since. <laughs> I was on a flight going to uh, New York. Uh, I was going to do a play there. This is eight years ago. And uh, I'm on JetBlue. And, uh, I, and I'm traveling. First time I'm going to be there months. So uh, my son drops me off at the airport. And I'm late because I didn't know. You know, I'm packing. My friend Robin Cohen, shout out to Robin Cohen. She tells me, I go, she goes, well, you pack for two weeks and just wash your clothes because that's yeah. not going to be there months. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. to do. Yeah. So I'm running through the airport and I'm sweating. You know, I got a, I got a, a suitcase and a carry-on and I'm running through the airport. And they're like, are you Brian? I go, yeah. You go, you got to get in here. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. And so I make it in the plane. I'm sitting there and I'm sweating. You know, now you're in your little seat and you yeah. can't, you know, got a sweatshirt on yeah. going to New York. Well, it's, right. it's summer. Then the plane sits there for like 15, 20 yeah. minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? This guy was like, hey, get in yeah. here. I'm sitting down, and it's just going on and on and on. All of a sudden, the door opens, and this guy comes walking on real slow. He's got a hat pulled down uh, to his eyes. He's wearing aviators. Yeah. And he's just kind of walking through. Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, no way. Uh, and they're holding a the plane for Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, I mean, he's a, he seems like a character. Yeah. So you guys start out and you start getting traction. Yeah. And I don't know, I heard this, that... So now, now you're able to sell tickets with your followers, right? You're able to sell shows well, for, the, yeah. for the DJ show. Yeah, for the, through TikTok. Now yeah, you it, it definitely and, helps, but it's not yeah. like I mean, I think anyone who's done well on social media and then tries to con convert it to traditional, right? Whether that's comedians trying to you know fill up a theater or DJs mm -hmm. doing a show or you know friggin' Lil Huddy doing a concert, right? Like, it's people think okay, you got 20 million followers, you've made it, you can. Pick and you have the pick of the litter and you can be whatever the fuck you want to be. You know, if I wanted to wake up tomorrow and be an actor, they're going to cast me in the next Paramount movie. That's not how it works at all. Right. You know, no. like right. we're no. almost starting from the ground floor as a musician. And again, we yeah. do have a cut the line pass with the 20 million followers. Like right. I'm not going to say it doesn't help at all. But right. at the end of the day, most of those people don't know we're DJs. You know, just because I know someone's good at, you know, I don't know, fucking making a grilled cheese sandwich, it doesn't mean I want them to cook me a steak, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a bad analogy, but, like, to some degree, right? <laughs> it like, made sense to me. You know, yeah. <laughs> you get it, because if you know, if you know yeah. like, that the real, what's going on behind the uh -huh. scenes, you get it, that it doesn't, you know, convert, like, just because, you know. So we, we are having to build the music audience, not from the ground up necessarily, yeah. but, like, it does feel like that sometimes, right? We have to prove to people that we deserve to be here, yeah. you know, that we deserve to be in the room. Right. Yeah. And... You know, it's like the last thing we want is just like we've been doing this for like fucking six years before we even like did TikTok, you know. Right. So it's like we don't want people to think, oh, it's just these guys who are trying to figure out like what to do next. And they're just like, oh, fuck it, let's be DJs. Yeah. It's like, nah, like right. uh, we've been doing this for a long time, went to school for it, like all that shit. Yeah. Know? So, you know, it, it definitely helps. And right. it's like, you know, it's gotten us our agency and our managers and it's gotten yeah. us these things that do help with the DJ thing. But at the end of the day, you know, to get people to come see you, you still have to sell them on that, you know? Right. So that's yeah. through, we're releasing music once a month. We're putting up DJ sets. We're, yeah. you know, trying to, like, we're, like, if, if people knew behind the scenes of, you know, 90% of the work we do is for the music. The TikTok's easy. Yeah. You know, we make right. a video here and right. there. Like, a factor cap takes five, ten minutes. Like, right. that's that's easy. Yeah, people right. come over, like, do factor caps with us or, like, collabs, and they're like, that's it? We're like, yeah, like, 
Right. It's just so like we have the format down. Like as long as getting the supplies is what takes the longest, you know. Right. Like we're one take it all, and it's just boom, mm-hmm. bust three out in yeah. ten minutes, and you just yeah. Everything else is just going towards music. Yeah. Or have y'all started vlogging your travel or anything like that? No, to... I want to get back to that. So when we first, you know, blew up on TikTok, right? It was it was super quick, like zero to. You gotta pick it up. Right? No, I thought, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought we were gonna finally get a good yeah. line. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, we got zero to 10 million followers in a couple of months. And so, like, the next evolution that obviously made sense was to do vlogging. Yeah. And it's just so, yeah. so vlog, any vlogger, you know, you really do. Like, after you've done it, you appreciate how fucking hard it is. Oh, yeah. Because you got to, like, get all these good bits and then edit it in a certain. Yeah. And like, it's like, you actually, like, if you really want to come out every week with a fucking, like, pretty good vlog. You got to have the cameras rolling at all fucking oh, yeah. times. Yeah. Like, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, like, how many a... times when you're vlogging, you're like, fuck, we should have been filming yeah. that, you know? You got to have like, a dude just, like, dedicated. Like, literally, yeah, like, he's got batteries at all times, yeah. like, just literally getting everything. Like, yeah, yeah it was a uh, lot. Yeah, like, it was tough. We're yeah. running around all week just doing a crazy bunch of stuff just to get, like, a fucking 10-minute, 20-minute video, yeah. you know? 10-minute video that gets, like... 50,000, 100,000 views, yeah. and then we make, spend five minutes on a TikTok that gets five million views, and you're like, mm-hmm. fuck, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. What are we doing? And then it's like, are we even it? really passionate about vlogging? Like, is yeah. this what I want to do, you mm-hmm. know? Because. Yeah, no, I just I brought it up because I figured, like, if No, but I definitely want to get back to it. Yeah, I want to bring it back to it. Now I feel like we can do it in a cool way because, like, everything is already kind of set up and so natural, you know? Right. Whereas, like, before, like, we were in a time where, like, we had to, like, really go out and, like, figure out. Exactly. Exactly. Now it's like we have the stuff Mm -hmm. to be able to, like, actually do, like, show cool content. And you're going, yeah, you're doing EDC this coming week? Yeah, next weekend. Next weekend, yeah, we're going to Orlando, that'll be fun. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that one's gonna be cool. Thank you. He's from Florida. That's from yeah. No, he was saying Daytona yeah. Beach. Oh, yeah. It sounds so much cooler. Did than I miss Orlando. him? I was checking my phone. <laughs> no, 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 no. He was saying before before we started up. So yeah. I've always yeah, Daytona Beach. I just like associate that with like Vice City, seventies cool. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, Back in the day, like. 70s, yeah. 80s, 90s, yeah. but then they like ran MTV out of there during spring break. Yeah, uh, okay. And there's the old, that just, old people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. whoa. It's ages. We're not right old, here. okay? I'm right here. Yeah. Age is a state of mind, That's okay? Right, man. And then I'm dead. Yeah, yeah, aren't we all? Yeah. So, and the thing about, you know, having the 20 million, 800,000 followers, and as I told you in the van, with my followers, it makes 21 million. There we go, yes, sir. So, yeah. uh, Correct it, it. They're all over the world. Yeah. So, yeah. do you ever reach out to people, you know, specifically and say, we're coming to your part of the world, Dude, you know? No, we just haven't really yeah. traveled like that. Yeah. And then another thing is that the majority of our followers are concentrated in the U.S., which okay. is, like, great for Avatar. Yeah. Like, on an yeah, Avatar, sure. you know, mostly U.S. and then Australia, U.K., um, maybe Canada and the Philippines. So, pretty much, like, the top, you know, in terms of ad dollars, like, we, we, we've got it. But the thing is, we've got fuck all people in europe so like and the dance scene that we're in is like it lives in europe yeah so it's like we're pushing against this title while like dude it's funny because like i feel like our music reaches europe though because like i literally like it's funny you said this like this week i got like a person like dming be like yo come play a show in ireland like some person was like yo like come play a show in like scotland or something i was like okay like we yeah, got nowhere in Europe. Yeah, we might have to. Yeah. 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 But yeah. so there's a way to do that, right? Contact the promoter, see, right. what, yeah. see what the vibe is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean that's the thing of putting people out there and and uh, you know putting videos out there and seeing where the, where they're yeah. coming from. Exactly, right? you can track all that, right? Exactly, where, where the yeah, 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 to some degree, yeah. yeah. No, and the, just... the good thing is, like, the U.S. market is a market every artist wants to crack. Well, sure. Because once you've cracked the... And that's... Or even as a kid in Australia, I always right. knew, like, just from a business standpoint, if I was a musician, I'd want to crack the U.S. market because sort of it bleeds everywhere else right. after that, right. you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think now countries are more getting more niche and they're having their own, their own music because it's just spread so much. Like, we're l- less reliant on the U.S. for sort of media, but right. it still is. The U.S. is still king. And if you can crack the U.S., like... You're probably good everywhere else. Right. Yeah. Right. Where do you see yourself going, man? Do you are you are you, so you do the music you love and yep. it's what you yeah. do. Yep. And so you've tried to do other things. So do you feel like still exploring and, and expanding your horizons or 
or just exploring I mean, and expanding what you do and just uh because i know you had the collaboration that's why we were in the yeah. video yeah and so you do some collabs mm. and then the people you just see you like their music and you go hey this would be cool this would be a fit or yeah i mean it was sort of that one was more our agents had put us in touch with dan and right. so he was talking to them too about well our former agents and he was talking to them too about so that was sort of more that we haven't really done a ton of collaborations because we're still figuring out our own yeah. sound you right. know we still yeah. want to craft that and have that really honed in um but like where do we see ourselves like going i mean we're like we're doing this to win you know we're not yeah. doing this as like we want to be one of the biggest djs in our genre right because a few years ago i said the biggest djs in the world but i now realize that like the genre we're in is sort of limited and i don't want to go make crap music that i don't love just to get more fans sure yeah. you know sure and before yeah. i would have been like that i'm like i want to be number it's all about winning you know i'm like but now I understand you've, got, you've been in LA long enough, you start to appreciate like art house and like yeah. these things I used mm. to be like, you stupid fucking idiots. There's a reason it's so niche, you know? Yeah. But now I'm like, no, actually, there is something it's special. Genius, about, you know? yeah. yeah, there is something special about having sort of these niche mm -hmm. sort of genres that, you know, I don't want to say are like better or this or that or like, you know, but yeah, I want to I want to do the music that we love yeah. and grow the biggest we can within people who love that type of music. Yeah, right. you know, I think yeah. that's all right. You got to craft that balance, and I think it's like you know, it's probably how directors feel. It's like, do I want to go make a Marvel movie and have a billion dollar movie, or do I want to make a cool movie for a twenty four and make fuck all money? Right. You know, and you right. got to sort of strike that balance. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And we just have crazy ideas too, so it's like that allows us, I guess, to like kind of really hone in on what we really want because it's like all right we have the tiktok social media leveled up there let's go somewhere else level up there music like we love fashion too we want to create clothing brands one day right. like start like a creative agency like we're just very entrepreneurial and like just visionary so like we are literally just the type of people that wake up yeah. one day and say hey yeah. let's just do this like we literally woke up one day and was like Hey, I think we should do a cookbook, and then we fucking sold a cookbook. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like we wrote two movie treatments. Like, yeah, yeah we and just have like we just love like so creating good. shit, you know. So it's like yeah. we're just like yeah. we have like the music and the TikTok, but it's like the rest of it is just like fucking seeing what we can make happen. Like you back know? to the backstage actors, we were like, all right, we want to make these anti drug PSA yeah. parody commercials, you know, because I'd sort of seen someone YouTube years ago and then brought up to Ivy and he remembered them. And yeah, we're just like, why don't we just recreate them and make something funny? And like now we're hiring, you know, we're directors and like yeah. it's like a Phineas and Ferb thing where every day we wake L up and do literally Phineas, Phineas and Ferb. Because like, if we had just been on. like, okay, we just want to do the music and focus because on that i do think i'd get bored yeah after it like yeah, once you, especially and once you become like the biggest in the whatever it's like how the fuck do you not get bored that's why you, i feel like we see so many social media creators who yeah. become super big and then just stop posting because they're like fucking sort of over it you know yeah. I've sort of one what's to really go from here you yeah know? so i think just and we're the type where it's like yourself. nothing's ever enough you exactly. know we're always like all right now we're like what can we do yeah. like uh, yeah, that's why it really is cool, about the yeah. journey, you know. It's yeah. like you hear that all the time, but sometimes yeah. you it's mm. like, yeah, you reach the destination and you're like, fucking. What's uh, the next you one? Know, yeah, yeah. You guys, yeah. Are, you guys are hustlers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just want to have our like hands in like every like part of culture, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's yeah, awesome, that's guys. awesome, man. Yeah. yeah, we love that shit. I oh, think yeah. we're we're about the end of our nice journey here. So, but you appreciate the, uh, you having us. Yeah, 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 this is fun. Awesome. The, de the destination is better than the journey. I'm just saying. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I had a lot of fun on the way. Granada Hills, uh, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh man, sweaty guys with boners. Yeah. All right, I think we got to shout some people out now. Yeah, okay, who are we going to shout? Tupac Shakur. We love the music. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, happy to take off. All the yeah. ones yeah. yeah. cash R. and R. things. Off, Five yeah. double O bands flatting, flaunting flashy rings. I just blew the line. I get around. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, is there anything you guys want to promote? Uh, no, I on? mean just we're doing doing music. You know, if you ever see us on a lineup, just a lineup. keep a lookout because yeah. we have. A lot of cool. We're kind of doing a full like rebranding, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, our yeah. next era. Shit's about it. Yeah, it's it's going to be a new, the start of a new era. Shit's about to get weird. It's about to get weird Shit's for sure. Get... Actually, yeah. yeah, it's about to get real weird in the coolest way possible. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, at party shirt on everything. Yep. 
at Nick Iverone or at Nick dot Iverone on Instagram at Xavier De Petter on Instagram. Yeah. Get the personals, you know. That's it. Yeah. We're dropping in numbers, so boost them back yeah. up. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone can, you know, maybe buy some followers from yeah. Bangladesh for us. Uh, I'd love to just wake up with a hundred k on my personal. No, don't know? say that because they did that to Steiny and it <laughs> fucked his whole page. Yeah. So don't even put that out yeah. there. Oh, I don't want. Don't please. Yeah, don't do that. Please yeah. don't do that. Right That's boring. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This was a best. Rock and roll Ralph. Rock and roll Ralph, baby. baby.